guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video, and today I'm going to be bringing you guys my HUD strategies, and a lot of people have been asking me on YouTube to post this out, so I thought, you know what, I'll take some time to explain how my strategies work, and also show you guys some in-game examples so you guys can actually apply these strategies into your game, and also know how to use them, because it's a little uh, different for everybody and their playing styles, and I think showing you guys a couple examples is a good way to go for this type of strategies video. So. First of all, I'm going to show you guys my record. I'm right now in Division 5, and really I've not played too many games on this account just because I'm right now playing a lot of Hot Roulette, and that takes up a lot of time as well. So let me go to the leaderboard and show you my record for those people that do need to that do need a little bit of proof that this does work. But yeah, here I'll just jump to my um, record right here. But you can see right now I'm 27-3-1. Honestly, a couple of those losses was just from me quitting out and catching Pokemon outside. Like if I saw Snorlax, or I saw a Dragonite outside, I'm not gonna like keep playing NHL. I'm gonna like quit all the game and catch those rare Pokemon. So my record should be a little bit better than that, but uh, I, I'm pretty addicted to Pokemon Go and you know, I, I kind of have an equal addiction to Pokemon and NHL. So Pokemon for rare Pokemon at least, I have to go out and catch them. Gotta catch them all, man. But uh, anyways, let's go to manage lineups and I'll show you guys my strategies while showing you guys some in-game examples. So first of all, um, you guys will see that my offensive strategies are very aggressive, and my defensive strategies are also kind of aggressive, but they're also very defensive as well. So I'll explain how these strategies work, as well as what I chose. So, first of all, 4-check, I like to put it on 1-2-2 aggressive. I like to have one guy go in deep, always chasing the puck, and you'll see in some examples I'm going to show you here, I always like switching my player to attack the defender and have my two other guys kind of get into position and getting ready to cut off those passes. And that is a really tough way for people to defend because once you put pressure on that defender, they are forced to make a play right away and that can cause a lot of mistakes, cause a lot of good turnovers for yourself to get some good shots on net. So that's how I like to always put my 4-check, 1-2-2 two, two aggressive. Uh, neutral zone is 1-4. And for those times that say I do miss those poke checks, having my guys fall back is always a nice little uh, way to defend. Uh, trap and four check. Once again, I like to have my four check all the way on. Although sometimes like my guys are a little bit stupid and they just run up the ice. Um, just having all my guys four check is the way to go in my opinion. You want to cause those turnovers and get some of those goals. So offensive pressure is on aggressive. And I did have it on full attack before, but I felt like the fence was like just forechecking way too hard and was biting on every play. So putting it on aggressive was a little bit nicer. It was like a nice little even balance between defense and offense, which I really, really like. So defensive pressure is on puck side attack. And I'm going to show you guys an in-game example of what how to actually use puck side attack. And basically, every player will line up in the, in the, in the game. And you want to keep switching your player to attack the puck. And you don't want to just stand in the middle with these strategies. I know you've heard a lot of people like Bacon Country or I, I don't know other YouTubers who said, oh, they're going to be doing the skill zone. Skill zone is the way to go. But honestly, with puck side attack, you basically want to control that player and get those poke checks on and cutting off any type of shots from the point. And the reason why you do not want people to shoot from anywhere is because this year, you guys know, the pucks are very, very jumpy. Uh, the the redirections are absolutely crazy. Like, they always go to the five hole, or they'll, like, hit your goalie, and then they will go over your like, go over the body. So you always want to use puck side attack just to block any shots, and also getting those poke checks on so you can have a chance of getting some odd man rushes or stuff like that. It's a nice little even balance, but it does take practice to use the puck side attack to your advantage in the defensive pressure zone. So, defensive strategy on staggered. I know some people like to use tight point, but honestly, staggered is the way to go in my opinion. It, it's a nice little even balance in your whole defensive zone, and it's very nice. It goes hand in hand with puck side attack, and it's not like too aggressive on the point, yet it's not too like defensive as well. So, staggered is the one I like to use. Uh, penalty kill, passive box, obviously just try to block your shots. Uh, being on the penalty kill, you just want to play a very conservative, dump the puck in when you have the opportunity to because, you know, you don't want any shots on net. You don't want to take any chances with NHL 17 this year. Passive box, just create the tight box in the defensive zone. Get the puck out when you have the chance to. And I, I, if you guys haven't watched my How to Deeks video, I already changed the title from NHL 16 to NHL 17. It's got like 300,000 views just about. And I show you guys how to do the... 
the puck lift it's right bumper and right stick and you really want to aim it as well using the left stick and just watch the video if you don't know how to do the puck flip it's the very last uh, deke on the deeks video and it's a very useful tool if say there are really aggressive uh, offensive checkers on you using that little play and always being very very careful with how to do that puck lift it, it will really help you out in uh, penalty killing situations okay so power play it is on overload you can also put it on shooting i know a lot of um at least my offense when i i had it on shooting before and i had it on overload too but uh, with shooting, a lot of players get in shooting positions, and for some reason, cross creasers are extremely powerful this year. If you can really get the puck off on a really good shooting player that's like at least an 86 overall plus player, they will usually snipe that puck pretty hard. So uh, you can either choose between shooting and overload, whichever one works for you better. You should really change those strategies up for yourself to make it work for you. But power play, really, you can change either or. Uh, power play, carry, and dump. I like to put that on the maximum, uh, just about the maximum, but not exactly. Uh, basically, what I want to do is I want to ring the puck around the boards so that my wingers can get the puck right away, and they will be the first one down to that puck usually, especially on power plays. Um, a lot of people will not let you step into that defensive zone, so what you want to do is you want to hold that puck out to the boards, making sure that you get that outside position, Hold that right trigger so you can wind up that pass and just ring it around the boards and usually your winger or your defender will get it if it's hard enough. So having that on just a little bit higher is the way I like to use it. Control, breakout, uh, strong side, slant. Honestly, I haven't really touched these that much and I haven't found that many problems. It was always like this once you start up NHL anyway, so I've always gotten used to these type of options. So control, breakout, I use strong side, slant, power, power play, breakout center lane option honestly that you could really choose single swing or center lane option i don't think the power play breakout makes too big of a difference because most people will give you that space to get those passes off and do whatever to break out into their defensive zone so quick breakout close support and that is for both five on five play four on four play you want to have a good foundation to break out as quick as possible so you can go right into the offensive zone so Anyways, those are the strategies. Hopefully, I explained that well with some in-game clips. Going on to the forward lines, I'm not going to talk about them too much because I have not changed them at all. So once you start up NHL 17 HUT, these are like the presets that you already get. Overload, uh, you can see that they're not much different than what you have already seen before uh, when you first open up NHL 17. And honestly, I think these are like the perfect balance like forward lines. And there's no need to change it in my opinion. They always work very, very well. And I think EA did a really good job with just setting up the forward lines for newbies and also for uh, experienced players like myself. So I don't like to change the forward lines at all. Going on to the defensive pairings though, I did have to change it a little bit. Because one thing I found was that facing a lot of really good players and also having a lot of fast players on their team like Pavel Burries or they'll have like Taylor Halls, people that can skate very, very fast in this game you have a very good chance that if, if you pinch, if you set this a lot higher, your defender will get beat a lot of the times. And I had it higher, set higher for a little bit of this game, and I just did not like it at all. My defenders were too groggy, even though most of my defenders have like 89 or 90 skating. Uh, they just couldn't turn fast enough to get those fast players. So putting this a lot lower makes them a lot less aggressive on that puck. And I will show you some defensive uh, clips right here of how I like to defend on uh, on two or two or one on one rushes. I pretty much just like standing right in front of the guy, making sure he cannot get that breakaway. If you give him that breakaway, that is pretty much a guaranteed goal. People will do that double backhand goal, or they'll do the backhand forehand, and you will always be beat. So you want to make sure you don't go for the big hit. I know a lot of people like to see those highlight reel hits, but if you're a person that likes to get into Division 2 or even Division 1, you cannot play like that. I, unfortunately, you can't have a highlight reel hit every single shift, and you want to play it very uh, strategically in terms of defense because if you are beat on that play, the only person to blame is yourself. So having that on the lowest, having it near the hold line is how I'd like to do it, not close to pinch 
closer to hold line. Honestly, I've not made any adjustments to cycle and shoot as well. They should be pretty much the same as what you see in NHL 17 once you boot up the game. But I just like to put that hold line just a little bit lower. I think when you open up NHL 17, it'll be like somewhere up here or around here. You want to set it a lot lower in my opinion. I think it works a lot better. But uh, yeah, you basically just want to get that perfect poke check on. Be very careful with stick checking people's feet and just follow along with them. If they try to dangle in your feet, the puck will be lost from their stick and you can grab the puck and go right ahead and go and attack in their offensive zone. So that's how I like to play. Those are my strategies. Hopefully the in-game clips have also cleared some stuff up as well and how to use these strategies for yourself and it to improve your game. So that is pretty much it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoy. If there's anything that uh, you guys felt like I need to explain a little bit more, feel free to leave in the comment box below. I am always happy to answer these type of how-to videos. I always want to be as clear as possible in these videos. And sometimes I do miss a couple things that, you know, are a little bit obvious, but sometimes I just miss it. So anyways, that's about it for this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Leave it a like if you guys did like how I explained these strategies. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Before, I'll probably sell all these players, I'll do like a trade day, I'll do some kind of live stream and uh, trade these guys away so you guys can see what they go for. Uh, but anyway, this team is worth about 200 or 300k, and uh, this team is working really, really well, and you can see just from the...